Baseball fans have had this week circled in their calendar for a long time as the winter meetings are the pinnacle of the MLB offseason. But for those of you who are waiting for that rush of signs to take place, make sure you understand one thing. The market this year hinges on one man, and that's Scott Boris, who will make or break these winter meetings. Last month, we ranked the top 25 free agents in baseball. And of our top 15, seven of them were Scott Boris clients. Of our top 10, five of them were Scott Boris clients. And this is a relatively weak free agent class. So if you're hoping that your team signs an impact player this offseason, there's a pretty good chance that that player is represented by Scott Boris. Last week, Ken Rosenthal was pointing this out on the Foul Territory podcast, and he explained how a similar situation took place back in 2019 during the winter meetings where Scott Boris represented Garrett Cole, Anthony Rendon, and Steven Strasburg. All three of those free agents were atop the class that year, and all of them signed during the winter meetings to contracts that were at least $245 million. If the offers are there, Scott Boris will move and will get a fast-paced and thrilling winter meetings. If the offers aren't up to Scott Boris's liking, we're going to be sitting back seeing not much action take place over this week and baseball fans are going to be left very disappointed. Taking a deeper dive into this year's free agent class, what you'll find is that Scott Boris has the top free agent at multiple positions. We begin with center field. Cody Bellinger is the best center fielder, the best outfielder, and arguably the best position player outside of Shohei Otani available in this class. Bellinger is coming off winning the NL Comeback Player of the Year in his lone season with the Chicago Cubs, where he hit 26 home runs, stole 20 bases, all while playing great defense in center field. There's going to be a lot of teams that will line up to sign Cody Bellinger but his market could be tied a bit to Shohei Otani. The San Francisco Giants apparently are still in on Shohei, and if he doesn't land there, there could be a lot more money to spend on a free agent like Cody Bellinger. You also have the New York Yankees. If trade talks stall on Juan Soto, could they get in the mix on Bellinger? There is a chance that the market takes some time to develop on Cody Bellinger, and then the question is, how much does that hold everything else up? Scott Boris also represents the second best center fielder on the market, Jung-Hoo Lee. Lee is a star outfielder from the KBO who will be posted on Monday. He brings exceptional bat-to-ball skills, great on-base ability, and he is heralded as a very good outfielder who can play center field or in either corner. There's going to be a lot of teams interested in Lee, but depending on how the market develops on Bellinger, Scott Boris, he can hold Lee back a little bit. He has 45 days to get him signed, he can use all of them if he wants to, and that is going to be something that might hold back the market in other ways. There's free agents like Michael A. Taylor and Harrison Bader who could be competing for offers from similar teams as the ones that will be interested in Jung-Hoo Lee. So again, this just shows how Boris has his tentacles all over this free agent class. We then move over to third base. The top free agent available, Matt Chapman. We'll see how aggressive teams are at acquiring Chapman, who's coming off a real roller coaster of a season where he was hot in the beginning and then really cooled off a lot, but still possesses great skills with the glove at a premier position at the hot corner. Are teams going to pay up? And if they don't, how much could that hold up the market for Jamer Candelario? Then you move over to first base, and I believe that Reese Hoskins should be the top free agent available at that position. That's a Scott Boris client. At DH, JD Martinez is probably the top free agent available outside of Shohei Otani, who's in his own different conversation. He is represented by Scott Boris, although I will say that Martinez's free agency is probably tied to Otani in some ways because if the Dodgers don't land Otani, then Martinez might circle back and re-sign with them. So we'll see if that develops over the course of the winter meetings. Finally, looking at the starting pitching market, Scott Boris represents Blake Snell and Jordan Montgomery. Now, right now, Yoshinobu Yamamoto is considered the top free agent starting pitcher in this class, and he's not going to sign during the winter meetings. There's already been reports that he's going to stay in Japan, he is taking his preliminary meetings, and then he'll return to the States after the winter meetings to meet with the finalists before deciding 
where he's ultimately going to sign. This puts Boris in a very interesting spot with Snell and Montgomery. He can rush the market now where there's so many teams that need pitching at the winter meetings and try to get these guys signed. But he also might believe that they'll get more money if they wait out Yamamoto's market. And so it's almost a game of chicken between Yamamoto's representatives and Boris, where they're trying to see who's going to sign last and potentially get top dollar. Yamamoto set himself up to be that one that's the last arm standing. But Scott Boris is an agent that is not going to let anybody else push him around when it comes to his clients. He might just sit on his hands with Blake Snell and Jordan Montgomery. And that could have massive repercussions on the rest of the market. Eduardo Rodriguez, you would imagine that a lot of the teams that are interested in Erod probably want Jordan Montgomery a little bit more. And they might be holding out their best offers to Rodriguez until Montgomery officially signs elsewhere. So he might be waiting this out. And there's countless other starting pitchers in this class, whether it's Marcus Stroman, Shota Emanaga, and even guys like Seth Lugo and Lucas Giolito. Okay, the market could really be put on hold depending on the top arms. There is sometimes a domino effect that takes place. And as Scott Boris is holding out, we might not see a lot of action. At the same time, this is also a market where we have seen pitchers like Lance Lynn and Kyle Gibson and Luis Severino cash in big time because so many teams are desperate to acquire starting pitching. So hopefully what's going to happen is teams are going to meet Scott Boris's prices and we could get a real snowball effect where a lot of his clients are signed when it comes to Snell and Montgomery on the pitching side and all those top position players and maybe as well that frees up the rest of the market where we could just be waiting on the top two guys by the end of the week. We could be waiting on Shohei and Yamamoto, but everything else could really move in a significant manner. This is going to be one of the more fascinating winter meetings, and Scott Boris is sitting exactly where he wants to. He controls the center field market with Bellinger and Lee. He controls a lot of the starting pitching market with Snell and Montgomery between Chapman Hoskins and JD Martinez a lot of the top bats might be waiting on those three to fall he really could control the pace of this offseason and it is going to be fascinating to see where all of these players ultimately land and more importantly when all these players ultimately land